Hi everyone, Sarah with Multifarious Nature, owner and creator. Um, welcome and thank you for joining me today. If you're new, thank you for thank you for coming. And um, if you would like to uh, get notified of new messages, please um, hit the subscribe button below and the bell, and you'll be notified. And uh, if you like what I talk about today, uh, please select like so I so I know what kind of content to keep moving forward. Um, if you are a current subscriber, thank you for joining me again. And uh, let's dive right in, guys. Sorry, I'm a little sniffly today. The weather is really wet, damp, and windy. It's not terribly, terribly cold out today, but it's that time of year after fall when you know, the leaves are down, and I definitely tend to get the sniffles, a little bit of allergy stuff going on. So bear with me. I apologize if I sniffle a lot. All right, so shop update first. So I have some new colorways. I was dyeing quite a bit yesterday. I didn't get to dye last weekend. So I have two new colors in the shop. Um, this is using a different technique than I've used in the past. So um, I hope you like it. I love the results. I love how it turned out. The first one is Gray Merle. Did it on the 100% Peruvian wool. So this is that slightly more rustic wool. It's definitely still soft. This would lend itself to a very warm, um, fluffy sweater if you wanted to make a sweater. And it's 438 yards for 100 grams. So the gray merle, you can see this is a variegated yarn. There's white in spots. There's this black in spots. This is all throughout the skein. And then there's gray. And it's slightly a blue gray in areas where it's where it kind of broke the color. And there's just slight little very very light brown in spots, but very little. So that's very sparse throughout. This is definitely more of a gray, black and white blend. So what I suggest is if you um, want to go with a variegated yarn like this, where it has quite extreme variegation, if you do go with that and you want to do a project that takes multiple skeins, I do highly recommend buying, um, you know, your three skeins if that's what you need, and then alternating your, your skeins. So when you're knitting, you'll do one row, one, so with one ball of yarn, and then when you knit back, you would knit back with the other ball or knit two rows in one and then knit two rows in the other skein. Um, that way you can just keep moving your yarn up the edge of your project instead of having to weave in a bunch of ends. But that way you won't have color pooling. So what tends to happen with variegated yarn like this is you may have color pooling. And that happened in um, a hat that I did with acrylic yarn that I purchased. I don't really care that that happened, but that's what happened. So as your pattern forms, when you're knitting, you'll have air sections of each color forming throughout, and that's called color pooling. So if you don't want that in your project, at least you want to try to avoid it as much as possible, I do recommend alternating skeins, and that will help you to uh, avoid that from happening. So this is Gray Merle. And if you're familiar with that, uh, this it's kind of a little, slight homage to little our little puppy Maverick. He is a mini Australian Shepherd, and uh, he is a red merle, but this is a gray merle coloring. So if you're familiar with that that breed, if you even look it up, you'll see the coloring, and that's where this one kind of is an homage to. All right, the next one, and I have a few skeins of both of these colorways in the shop. Next one is caramel corn, which I thought was pretty appropriate for this time of year. So this one, I actually experimented with some speckling. So you can see there's some speckling of this yellow-orange color throughout the skein. This is also a variegated yarn. This is on that alpaca blend base, so the 206020. So it's 20% super fine alpaca. 60% superwash merino and 20% nylon. 
and that's uh, at 437 yards per 100 grams. You can see in the skein, um, there's a nice like dark medium brown through here. You get this really light, um, kind of a taupe color actually, a bit of a taupe. And then there's like medium brown and then this beautiful yellow orange color speckling throughout. So that's caramel corn. And again, same thing with this. Um, if you want to prevent color pooling to uh, alternate skeins, you won't really have too much color pooling when it comes to speckling, but the areas that are uh, dyed up solid, there could be some pooling in those areas. So if you do want to avoid that, again, just alternate your skeins and that will help with that. So I have a couple of each of these in the shop. This is nice and super, super, super soft. Um, just depends what, what you're looking for. And again, if you like these colorways and you uh, have seen a different base in my shop that you really like, just let me know um, that you love this color, you want it on this base, and then I can create a listing for you. So I'm definitely always open to that. So let me know. So those are the two new colorways in the shop, gray merle and caramel corn. Okay, so works in progress. This week, uh, I was going to talk about the Deandra shawl because uh, I I'm, I've got a lot done on that, but I really didn't work on it at all this past week. Um, I started Christmas gifts. Uh, and <laughs> because I know that those people probably will watch this prior to Christmas, I am not going to be showing those projects in the videos until after I gift them and I will probably do them in a video just about those projects instead of a normal weekly podcast type thing. So, or at least it's weekly at the moment. I'm really trying hard to do this weekly for you guys. So bear with me if I'm a little late in the week sometimes when I upload. I, I'm starting to realize that does take a bit of time. So, uh, but I did get a bunch of progress done on my Pearl Soho Lightweight Raglan. So I'll show you that. I actually got so far <laughs> that I had to stop and I can't do any more on it because, you know, I said I, I kind of want to uh, be minimalist with my needles. <laughs> well, <laughs> now I have to be patient because the next size knitting needle cord that I need to change to, uh, I need to change to a smaller cable and I probably could do the magic loop method and I may break down and do that but because I, I do like to do the magic loop method because I'm at the collar guys I am at the collar which the collar is just a couple inches it's a couple row like an inch actually it's just like an inch more I think it's four more rows of stitching and then I'm done with the knitting part I just have to weave in the ends so We'll see how long it takes me to break down and do that. <laughs> but yeah, I I put it aside now that I picked it up again. I'm going, gosh darn it, I need to need to finish it. Oh, and then I also have to, of course, um, Kitchener snip Kitchener stitch. Kitchener snitch. Kitchener stitch the uh, underarms closed. So I'm almost done, guys. Look at that. I got shoulders. It's this, and this is where the collar is. So I am basically there. And I tried it on the other day because I wanted to see, you know, if I was on the right track. So I should have, there's good and bad to reading ahead on a pattern because this pattern is, how many pages is this? If I better look, it's a lot of pages for a pattern. It's 16 pages of pattern. So that's a lot, and if you read ahead and just before you start the project, it can get a little overwhelming when you do that. So I briefly just looked at it, and I did kind of look through it to get an idea of how the pattern works. But if I had actually looked hard, and I don't know, this may or may not have made sense at the beginning, uh, but the... Uh, 
a short row shaping, I find, describes the raglan shaping better. And the reason why I say that, because you know how I told you guys that if you look at my raglan, <laughs> it doesn't look like the pictures. It doesn't. And there's a reason why, because I'm not doing it the way it's supposed to be done. Well, guess what? When I got near the end here and it tells you how to do the um, short row shaping for the like, shoulder area here. <laughs> now, now I have the correct raglan decreases. I mean, I don't really care that it's changing from this to that. I think it just looks kind of cool. It just looks like it's part of the pattern because it's consistent. But that's a mess up. It totally is a mess up. Um, but I'm going to leave that. I may or may not, because at this point, there is no way I'm going to rip back to the beginning. At least, no, there's no way. I really want to wear this sweater in this winter time. So, but here's why I might do that at some point. At the very bottom, I don't know if you can tell. Oh, yes, I got you in the right spot here. So this has a scoop down in the front and a scoop down in the back. That's the way the shirt fits. I think I have a picture I can show you that might explain it a little bit better. Sorry for the crinkly paper here. Well, this shows it pretty well. So that's the primary photo. See how it slightly scoops down in the front and in the back. So when I did this, the sleeves, which again, it could be user error or it's the pattern, but um, cause I looked at it a lot cause I was like, there's no way when you do the sleeves and when you place the sleeves, I looked at that and I was like, gosh, I don't know. That almost seems like it's off. So I read it twice. I did it three times. I took that row out and redid it. I still wasn't sure. <laughs> of course, the further along you knit, you then notice your issue. The issue, and you guessed it probably, the sleeve is not in the right spot they're slightly shifted. Now it's just slightly. And when I tried this on and I pulled it down right in the right spot, you can almost get away with it. It doesn't necessarily look like it's shifted, right? It is though. It is definitely shifted. So, uh, looks, I looked at the pattern and it looks like a lot of people ran into that problem in the comments under the pattern, which I find interesting. First, I thought it was just user error, but then maybe it's not. Um, so, of course, what they suggested is you could either rip back, which is like three months worth of work, so I don't think I want to do that. Um, so you can either rip back, or they suggested, I believe this was a suggestion. I have never done this, and I don't know if I have it in me to do it yet is sticking. So sticking is, I don't quite understand the process, but somehow blocking it and, um, kind of like, I think, I think inserting like a lifeline or something. And then you or not even a lifeline. I think you stitch it. It's like a row of stitching of some kind, but you do that where you want it to stay and remain knit. And then you cut it. You actually cut your work, which I know it's a thing and I know people do it all the time, but that just makes me cringe thinking about it. But then what I would do is I would cut it where that scoop is just above it, where that straight edge is, and then it would create a straight edge. And then you can just knit a couple inches of straight edge to make your sweater longer. And that's the way you can fix this because when I put it on, I mean the top portion above the scoop all looks really good guys. I am so excited with how this turned out. This is um, yarn from Expression Fiber Arts and it I don't know if they have this base anymore. It's a, um, a Superwash Merino Cashmere Silk Blend. It is so soft. That's why I want to wear this so bad because when I tried it on it was just so cozy and soft and I want to wear it especially now that it's getting cold. Really really chilly outside. I don't want to rip it back so I think I'm just gonna get away with it with the weird scoop at the moment and deal with it because I just I'm really excited about it and I want to wear it for the holidays so I think I'm just gonna do that and deal with the scoop being slightly off <laughs> it's okay see no mistake but I'll deal with it 
So I got a bunch done on that. And uh, I, I'm trying to think where my progress keeper was. I guess I should have showed you that. So my progress keeper was here. So I got a couple inches done and it goes a lot faster. So there's, I think around 300 stitches originally down here somewhere. And as you decrease, cause you're decreasing, it goes a lot faster the closer you get to the top. You can just go, you're just knitting away and it goes really fast. So I, I love that and I'm almost done. And I really do think I'm gonna work on that now. I, I was working on Christmas projects, but I did finish one of them. So I feel like I can treat myself to working on a project for myself again. <laughs> anyway, um, next one is a finished object, guys. I have a finished object. <laughs> Uh, my other projects take a long, long time, but these were really fast uh, workups here. And that's that um, Bees Socks. Uh, the pattern is on Ravelry. It is free and they were super, super fast and easy to make. So they're fun. It's using yarn that my mom gave me. Um, I believe it's 100% wool. It has that floofy, bouncy, thick feel to it. And so I got two. I've got two socks. I do not have second sock syndrome. I mean, I guess other than really, really wanting to finish these. When I got done with the one, I was just like knitting like crazy fast because I wanted to finish them. And I'm going to put it on so you can see it and appreciate it because I don't feel like you can really appreciate the look of these socks unless they're on. <laughs> Isn't that cute? So I've got that. Um, I don't know. It's like a brown color and then it goes i guess it's like a burgundy burgundy brown something and the golden yellow <laughs> and and then it goes to this this raspberry red color so kind of a random combination of colors but you can see that cool webbing on there <laughs> don't mind my foot in your face but they're just so cozy and, and warm and they were really easy to make. I did like that pattern. That was super easy to follow. And here's the other one. So <laughs> that was really easy to follow. And um, I just used my circular needles. I did one at a time. I Based on the, the way that it was, I, maybe you could have done two at a time with a really big cable. Um, but I didn't, I just did one at a time and that was fine. And uh, I probably should get better about telling you guys the size needle and everything I used. I'm pretty sure I used the needle that came or that was recommended by the pattern. I do sometimes go up or down a size um, when knitting because just to get gauge. But I have another finished object and this one is hilarious. So. I did knit when I was in college and I, it was, it was definitely to de-stress, but I, um, went to, uh, ah, I was in a fine arts program. Goodness. Can't complete sentences today. And, um, so you would think painting and stuff would be enough of a de-stressor, but I needed something different. So I, I haven't, okay, this is what I started out with guys started out with really long metal needles and you can see how these are kind of bent. They've been through the war apparently, uh, between moving from college back to my parents, from my parents to my apartment, to another apartment in a different state. And now to my home here in Zeeland, Michigan. So they've been through a lot. They've definitely gotten bent and these are a size eight, uh, needle which is kind of a typical size for knitting when you're learning and uh, with worsted weight yarn. And I need a bunch of hats with these. I've knit scarves with these when I was just starting to really knit. Um, this is what I started out with. The tips are all nice and beat up and the colors completely off of them. So when you're first learning, I didn't, I didn't realize how awkward these are to work with. <laughs> now that I've, I've graduated to working with um, circular needles where they're only like five inch needles and then you have a cable that's bendable. Um, these are super awkward to work with. And it is nothing against anyone who uses them. They're very reasonably priced. 
so I totally understand the draw, which is why I bought them in the first place. And my grandma always used straight needles. I just thought that's what you should use. And so that's what I bought. I highly recommend circular needles, whether you're a beginner or not. And you can get really inexpensive circular needles that are basically the same price as these. And I, I do recommend that. I don't, even if they're a plastic cord, which those are a pain in the butt, by the way. However, these, I just, and they're, I just used these because I had a project that I worked on in college that I never finished. And I just wanted to finish it because I'm like, this is ridiculous. I have it wrapped up in, you know, incomplete in a basket and it's taking up space. So I want it to be done. So here's my other finished object, guys. I don't even know what the pattern is. Um, I'm sure I got it from a book or something. It was probably free because I was in college and, you know, didn't have a lot of money to be spending on things. So this is my first cable piece, though, too. This is my first cable piece. And I think it actually turned out really nice. It is a scarf. A very, very long scarf. Very long. So a nice long scarf. I actually was going to make it a lot longer, but uh, I just decided to put it, this thing out of its misery because I'm not going to finish it in the sense of making it longer. The reasoning is, well, I'm going to show you how I... <laughs> how I connected colors when I was doing this. And it's okay if you do this too, but don't, don't do it. It doesn't look nice. So what I did is I literally just tied a knot <clears throat> at the end, because I changed colors at the end of the row. I tied a knot with knot, with, with really short ends when I cut it. So I can't weave those ends in, not well. Like I'm gonna try, but this little end, that little spot of a thing is not gonna get woven in. So that was a bad move on my part. Um, so I just like, just quickly whipped this off the needles. But when I was whipping it off the needles, I used the needles, of course, that I was using when I knit this. And it was so awkward and hard on your wrist to use those compared to the little circulars. So I just, I, I cannot recommend circulars enough because, oof, yeah. And of course I can see where I've made mistakes. A few of these cables are longer in areas and shorter because I probably did a couple extra rows and I didn't want to go back and, and uh, actually knit it properly at the time. So I'm pretty sure if I remember, I was knitting this at Christmas time when I was visiting my parents when I was in college. So. Yeah, this is a, this is an old project, but I didn't finish it today in 2020. Um, like 10 years later, I finally finished this project. This should not take someone 10 years to make, but apparently it did take me 10 years to finish. So here's my other finished object. Tell you, but these super awkward. If you want to buy knitting needles, your first pair of knitting needles, if you're going to get metal ones with like this, which I still don't recommend them. I don't know. Some people might love this. And if you do, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to offend you, but don't get the really long ones. Get the short ones that are like maybe five inches or, um, and then again, this is for your, this is for your stitches. So when I have a cable, you know, I might have 40 inches of cable, so you can put a bunch of stitches, like 300 stitches on that, and it, it spreads out the stitches. So you have to have this kind of room, I guess, if you need to spread out your stitches, which is why I recommend a <laughs> circular knitting needle instead of, of these oh, super awkward needles. I don't know what I'm going to do with these, but I don't think I'm ever going to use them again because they are heavy and it's very hard on your wrist very awkward to deal with anyway get off of that that rant i just had to rant about that because i just finished that scarf before i did the video and i feel like people just need to know that if you haven't knit with those needles and you were debating just don't say no just say no all right guys so new yarn in the shop 
gray merle, caramel corn. They will be in the shop shortly and um, I will of course include links and there'll be more photos of everything on the website as well. And uh, yeah, and I am just going to finish this with a question for you guys. So uh, when it comes to, I'm, I'm definitely making an assumption here and if you don't, that's totally fine. My, my assumption is maybe you like to knit or crochet or maybe interested. Um, so my question for you is, what is your favorite knit or crochet pattern that you've ever done? I would love to know about it because I'm always looking for fun new projects. So if it's, uh, please comment below and let me know what's one of your favorite knitting or crochet projects that you've done or maybe, you know, you really want to do. I'd love to just see what your, what your interests are. And uh, please comment below. So, hope everybody's uh, happy and healthy and and doing well during all of this. I know um, states are going through different things now. Um, I try not to dwell on on certain things because you might be coming here to escape what's going on in the world right now. But um, I know where I'm at currently. Things are are spiking when it comes to the pandemic. So. Uh, I am able to work from home now again, which I am so grateful for that I uh, do have that flexibility. So for those of you that are still having to go into work, um, you know, please uh, do your best to stay safe and keep others safe around you. And uh, yeah, stay healthy. It's a holiday season, so I want to be able to see our families and, and do all that. So, so keep on creating, guys. Keep looking on the, the bright side, and I will see you later in the week. Have a great rest of your week, guys. Bye.